Hey friends, my name is Yi, and you're watching Yi, Mr. Easy. And we're going to a new video for IGCC Advent and today. We have the rules and examples for kinematics or basically mechanics. And we'll start off with some basics, but before you get into it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And we'll start off with differentiation and integration. And one key thing to note is that for kinematics or basically um like any Thing that's related to trick, we should use radiant for trigonometry, trigonometry or like trick. So here's the relationship between distance or displacement and velocity and acceleration. Basically from distance to velocity you basically differentiate it and for velocity to acceleration you differentiate it. So conversely the other way around, acceleration to velocity will be integrate and to, from velocity to distance you basically integrate. And here are the two equations or like basically notations to use. Since distance is S or basically displacement, we use displacement more often for like kinematics and mechanics. Since distance is S, we have to find the velocity, right? So we have to differentiate a uh, distance with respect to time. So it will be dS or the change in distance over, oops, over dt which is basically the change with respect to time and that will equal to v, which is velocity. And conversely, acceleration will be dv over dt. But if we use the, if we still stick with the distance notation, it will be d squared x over dt squared, or basically the second derivative of distance. And integration is the same right here, where v equals the integral of a, and s equals the integral of v, and they're both with respect to time. And here's an equation for the average speed. Basically, average speed equals the total distance over the total time. So one key need to note is that it's basically the total and total. Then we have graphs for some basics. So the more we have displacement time graph or basically distance time graph. Distance. So we have the different gradients which corresponds to different things. So basically what, um, what the gradient in the displacement time graph tells us is the gradient the gradient is the velocity. Velocity. So when there's a curve right here, it means that it's accelerating. If it's a straight line, like a straight line going up, it's constant speed. If it's a curve that's going like this way, it's slowing down. And if it's a horizontal line, it's sorry. If it's a horizontal line, it'll be stationary. Because think of it this way: if we have a distance with a time. And if, let's say, two seconds pass and your distance is still the same, that means you're still stationary. And basically the maximum point is the point furthest away from the starting point. In the velocity, velocity time graph, the, um, the, it's the gradient is equal to the acceleration. Acceleration. Oops, it's a bit messy. So uh, this line right here basically means a positive gradient. Sorry, positive acceleration and positive gradient, zero acceleration and negative acceleration. And the maximum point is the fastest speed at that point or at that journey. And for acceleration time graph, the gradient is, we don't really need this because the gradient is not in our spec, but it's basically called jerk. So jerk is basically the derivative of acceleration. So one thing to note is that the area under these graphs right here is basically what this is. I.e. The, sorry, the, sorry, the area under acceleration time graph will be velocity. The area under velocity, velocity time graph will be equal to displacement and so on. And then we have SUVAT or basically some physics equation. So this uh, one thing to note is that SUVAT is only for equ like it's equations like they are equations of motions with constant acceleration. This is very important, but you won't really come across with any equation with non-constant acceleration anyway. So we have four basic equations: v equals u plus at, s equals u plus v over two times t, v squared equals u squared plus two as, and s equals u t plus half at square, where s is the displacement u is initial velocity, v is final velocity, a is acceleration, and t is time. And we'll now move on to some examples. So number one, a particle p moves in a straight line so that its displacement, s meter, is uh, from a fixed point on the line 
is given by s equal 3t squared minus 12, where t is the time in seconds after passing the point a on the line. Find the distance OA. So we can basically just, just draw like a, like a diagram, a simple diagram. So we have this straight line here, this is more than a straight line. So we know that t is the time in seconds after passing the point a on the line. So let's just say this is a, and this is a particle p. And this will be, let's say, O, okay? So find the distance OA. So the distance OA is when the time is zero and the P will be at, the particle P will be at A and you, just, you can just find the distance from O to A, right? So let O be like, let's say, an, the origin. Um, so when T equals zero, or basically 3T squared minus 12, when t is zero, the dis the, the displacement will be equal to minus twelve meter, right? But since distance is a scalar which has no direction, therefore the distance sorry, let me zoom in. The distance equals twelve so let's just use, use a new color. The distance equals twelve meters. All right, so in question two, so I'll be Find the velocity of p when it passes O. So we have to find what the uh, the time is at point O, right? Like what time it passes by or like what time it is. So at point O, we know that the displacement is zero, right? Because if this is basically 12, but when p is at zero, the displacement is zero. So when the p is at O, the displacement is zero. So just set it as zero equals 3t squared minus 12. And so for t squared equals 4, and since time coming negative, it will just be t equals 2. And remember how if we integrate, uh, sorry, if we differentiate displacement, you get time, sorry, you get velocity. So basically, a velocity is basically the, inter, uh, the, different, the derivative of uh, displacement with respect to time, ds over dt, will be equal to 6t, and the minus 12 just disappeared, and t equals 2 in this condition. Therefore, 6 times 2 is 12, so it will be 12 meter per second, right? So, right, so, and number 3, or C, find the average speed of P during the first 3 seconds. So, as you saw just now, the average speed, average speed, is equal to the total displacement or the total distance over total time. The total time we know is 3 seconds as given in the question, so 3 seconds. So therefore, we can basically find um, the displacement where o, where p is from o after 3 seconds, which I've mentioned just now. So that displacement equals 3 times 5, sorry, 3 times 3 squared minus 12 equals 15 meters. That means that after 3 seconds, p will be 15 meters away from like, the initial point, right? So therefore, the total distance travel is 15 which is after three seconds plus twelve, which is the initial um, speed, is the initial distance from O point O. Therefore, if we were to simplify it, you would get an average speed of nine meter per second, like so. And last question we have, uh, question number two: A stone is projected vertically upwards from a height of thirteen meters above ground uh, with a velocity eight meter per second. Calculate the greatest height above uh, it, the greatest height the greatest height above the ground. So let's say this person throws this stone up. When it reaches like um, the top, it'll be like an arc, right? Like so, and it'll go down. So this point right here will be when it, the greatest height above the ground, and this point right here will be when the when the velocity the velocity is zero, right? Because it's not moving up or it's not and no, it is not moving down. So we can use the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2as and we can resolve the force going upwards and it's important to resolve a force in one direction so that you keep all your signs the same. For example, if we have acceleration, since we know the earth is right here and the person standing on it, the acceleration to the ground is equal to g, which is like gravitational force. And if we were to resolve the force downwards, g will be equal to positive. But if we were to resolve the forces upwards, g will be negative because it's going against the direction of motion. Right? So v squared, the v will be 0 because you have to find the fact that um, this point here is equal to 0. 
the initial velocity is given as 8, 8 meter per second. So it would be uh, 8 squared plus 2. Acceleration will be minus g or minus 10 because we use 10 for acceleration. And remember that we use minus 10 is because we're basically um, resolving the forces upwards. And it will be s. So we can basically just rearrange the equation. It will be minus 20s. Bring it around to get 20s equals 64. Therefore, s equals 64 over 20. Or if we were to simplify it, 64 over 20 will get us 3.2 meter. So 3.2 meter. But wait, that's not the greatest height. Because we are basically finding um, it's, it's projected vertically upwards from a height of 13 meters, right? And the ground is basically 13 meter below. So the, the greatest height above the ground will be the in initial height, which is 13 meters, plus the height after uh, the height when the velocity is equal to zero. So it will be three plus uh, the, the 3.2 meter plus 13 meters equals 16. 0.2 meter, and that's the final answer. And B, it's velocity when it hits the ground. So we have to find, we have to use the v squared equals u squared, uh, v squared equals u squared plus 2as as well, u squared plus 2as. The velocity when it hits the ground, or like right before it hits the ground, it'll be v, right? And we know u is the initial velocity that we toss upwards with. So the initial is right here, 8 meter per second, 8 squared plus 2, a s will be, the, the a will be basically will be equal to positive 10. Because in this situation it's a bit more different, because let's just draw an accurate diagram. So you have this 13 meter above the ground, 13 meter. We're finding the speed of the stone when it throws upwards and then downwards like here. We have to find the speed here. So we have to model this whole journey as one whole journey in this case right here. So we know that the v is here, the v. The u squared is the whole, the start of the journey, which is u squared right here. 2 a s a. You might think that we might actually use a s negative because it's going upwards, but we're more focused on the downwards motion and it is um, the most like sensible option to use as the ball is accelerating downwards when the final velocity is that occurs. So it'd be plus 10 times the displacement which is the displacement from the initial position, which is 13 meters right here. So 13. Therefore, v squared equals 3 to 4 meters. And therefore, v equals, if we were to square up both sides, it would be equal to 18 meter per second. And in this case, it's important to note that I'm resolving the forces downwards. And I should have stated that at the start. So therefore, the initial velocity should actually be minus 8. But it doesn't matter anyway because you have to square the number. And therefore v equals 80 meter per second and that's the final answer. And this is for this question to video for IGCSE and Maths. But today we look into the kinematics, the rules and examples for kinematics. And I hope you find it useful and helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and ring the notification button to miss out on any future videos. And if you have any comments or constructive feedback about my channel or my YouTube or my Instagram, you can leave them in the comment section and I'll reply to them. And check my social media in the description, for example, YouTube or LinkedIn or Instagram. And if you need any learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description. Or you can type it out in your browser at www.emcaz.com. And I hope you find it useful and helpful. And I'll see you all in the next video, which will be the questions for kinematics, which will be interesting. But until then, stay safe and happy learning.